Today's day three for the Come Follow Me study for this week, February 12th through the 18th. We lived after the manner of happiness, 2 Nephi 3 through 5. Wednesday, February 14th, 2024, 2 Nephi 3, 16 through 25. God's covenant with Joseph. 2 Nephi 3, 16. Yea, thus prophesied Joseph, I am sure of this thing, even as I am sure of the promise of Moses. For the Lord hath said unto me, I will preserve thy seed forever. It is written that those who are righteous are favored of God. It was so with Joseph. He was among the noblemen of heaven because of his faithfulness. Many have felt that his great reward was to become prime minister of Egypt. But from what you have read, what was another great blessing that was promised to Joseph? In an age that so often lacks genuine heroes, does it inspire you to look at one such as Joseph of old? Why is the statement of the Lord as given in 3 Nephi 20, 25, and 26 significant in this context? And behold, ye are the children of the prophets, and ye are of the house of Israel, and ye are of the covenant which the Father made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed, the Father having raised me up unto you first, and sent me to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities, and this because ye are the children of the covenant. Prophets and Spokesmen 2 Nephi 3, 17-18 And the Lord has said, I will raise up a Moses, and I will give power unto him in a rod, and I will give judgment unto him in writing. Yet I will not loose his tongue, that he shall speak much, for I will not make him mighty in speaking, but I will write unto him my law, by the finger of mine own hand, and I will make a spokesman for him. And the Lord said unto me also, I will raise up unto the fruit of my loins, and I will make for him a spokesman. And I, behold, I will give unto him that he shall write the writing of the fruit of thy loins, unto the fruit of thy loins, and the spokesman of thy loins shall declare it. Who are the different people spoken of? Elder Bruce and McConkie identified the people spoken of in 2 Nephi 3.18 as follows. Note these words of the Lord. And I, behold, I will give unto him Moroni, that he shall write the writing of the fruit of thy loins, the Nephites, unto the fruit of thy loins, the Lamanites. And the spokesman of thy loins, Joseph Smith, shall declare it. That is, Mormon wrote the Book of Mormon. But what he wrote was taken from the writings of the Nephite prophets, and these writings, compiled into one book, were translated by Joseph Smith and sent forth by him unto the Lamanites. 2 Nephi 3, 19-21 And the words which he shall write shall be the words which are expedient in my wisdom, shall go forth unto the fruit of thy loins. And it shall be as if the fruit of thy loins had cried unto them from the dust, for I know their faith. And they shall cry from the dust, yea, even repentance unto their brethren, even after many generations have gone by them. And it shall come to pass that their cry shall go, even according to the simpleness of their words. Because of their faith, their words shall proceed forth out of my mouth unto their brethren, who are the fruit of thy loins and the weakness of their words, will I make strong in their faith, unto the remembering of my covenant which I made unto thy fathers. Enos 1 and it came to pass that after I had prayed and labored with all diligence, the Lord said unto me, I will grant unto thee according to thy desires, because of thy faith. And now behold, this was the desire which I desired of him, that if it should so be that my people, the Nephites, should fall into transgression, and by any means be destroyed, and the Lamanites should not be destroyed, that the Lord God would preserve a record of my people, the Nephites, even if it so be by the power of his holy arm, that it might be brought forth at some future day unto the Lamanites, that perhaps they might be brought unto salvation. For at the present our strugglings were vain in restoring them to the true faith, and they swore in their wrath that if it were possible, they would destroy their records and us, and also all the traditions of our fathers. Seed of Joseph, son of Lehi, to accept Book of Mormon. Second Nephi 3, 22-24 And now behold my son Joseph, after this manner did my father of old prophesy. Wherefore, because of this covenant thou art blessed, for thy seed shall not be destroyed, for they shall hearken unto the words of the book. And there shall 
rise up one mighty among them, who shall do much good, both in word and in deed, being an instrument in the hands of God, with exceeding faith to work mighty wonders, and to do that thing which is great in the sight of God, unto the bringing to pass much restoration unto the house of Israel, and unto the seed of thy brethren. Joseph Smith was chosen by God to restore the gospel. What do you learn from verses 18-24 through 24 about why the Book of Mormon is important? What do verses 6-24 through 24 say that Joseph Smith will do to bless God's people? Consider how Joseph Smith's work has been of great worth to you. You might get some ideas from the videos about Joseph Smith and the Prophets of the Restoration Collection in the Gospel Library. Look for words or phrases that describe the Prophet Joseph Smith in 2 Nephi 3.24 and add them to your list in your scripture journal. As you read the following quotation from President Gordon B. Hinckley, add to your list any additional teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith that confirm he was an instrument in the hands of God. Permit me to name a few of many doctrines and practices which distinguish us from all other churches, and all of which have come of revelation to the youthful prophet Joseph Smith. The first of these, of course, is the manifestation of God himself and his beloved Son, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. This knowledge of deity, hidden from the world for centuries, was the first and great thing which God revealed to his chosen servant. The Book of Mormon has come forth by the gift and power of God. Another contribution of the prophet Joseph Smith is the restored priesthood. Another great and singular revelation given to the prophet was the plan for the eternal life of the family. The innocence of little children is another revelation which God has given through the instrumentality of the prophet Joseph. The great doctrine of salvation for the dead is unique to this church. The eternal nature of man has been revealed. There is one more that I must mention. This is the principle of modern revelation. During the brief thirty-eight and one-half years of his life, there came through the prophet Joseph Smith an incomparable outpouring of knowledge, gifts, and doctrine. Think about questions like these and consider recording your answers. What do you know about Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ because of what Joseph Smith taught? How is your life different because of what the Lord restored through Joseph Smith? What would your life be like if the restoration had not happened? List at least six prophecies in 2 Nephi 3 that relate directly to the prophet Joseph Smith. What did Joseph of Egypt say about Joseph Smith? The Lord inspired Joseph of Egypt to see many centuries into the future. He shared the following truths about Joseph Smith. A seer shall the Lord my God raise up, who shall be a choice seer unto the fruit of my loins, or descendants. He shall be great unto Moses, whom I have said I would raise up unto you to deliver my people. Unto him will I give power to bring forth my word unto the seed of thy loins, and not to the bringing forth my word only, saith the Lord, but to the convincing them of my word, which shall have already gone forth among them, such as the Bible. Out of weakness he shall be made strong in that day when my work shall commence among all my people, unto the restoring thee, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. That seer will the Lord bless, and they that seek to destroy him shall be confounded. His name shall be called after me, and it shall be after the name of his father. See also Joseph Smith's translation for Genesis 50, 24-38. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and go unto my fathers, and I go down to my grave with joy. The God of my father Jacob be with you, to deliver you out of affliction in the days of your bondage. For the Lord hath visited me, and I have obtained a promise of the Lord, that out of the fruit of my loins the Lord God will raise up a righteous branch out of my loins, and unto thee, whom my father Jacob hath named Israel a prophet not the Messiah who is called Shiloh. And this prophet shall deliver my people out of Egypt in the days of thy bondage. And it shall come to pass that they shall be scattered again, and a branch shall be broken off, and shall be carried into a far country. 
Nevertheless, they shall be remembered in the covenants of the Lord, when the Messiah cometh, for he shall be made manifest unto them in the latter days, in the spirit of power, and shall bring them out of darkness into light, out of hidden darkness, and out of captivity unto freedom. A seer shall the Lord my God raise up, who shall be a choice seer unto the fruit of my loins. Thus saith the Lord God of my fathers unto me, A choice seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and he shall be esteemed highly among the fruit of thy loins. And unto him will I give commandment that he shall do a work for the fruit of thy loins, his brethren. And he shall bring them to the knowledge of the covenants which I have made with thy fathers. And he shall do whatsoever work I shall command him. And I will make him great in mine eyes. For he shall do my work, and he shall be great like unto him, whom I have said I would raise up unto you, to deliver my people, O house of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. For a seer will I raise up to deliver my people out of the land of Egypt, and he shall be called Moses, and by his name he shall know that he is of thy house, for he shall be nursed by the king's daughter, and shall be called her son. And again a seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and unto him will I give power to bring forth my word unto the seed of thy loins, and not to the bringing forth of my word only, saith the Lord, but to the convincing them of my word, which shall have already gone forth among them in the last days. Wherefore the fruit of thy loins shall write, and the fruit of the loins of Judah shall write, and that which shall be written by the fruit of thy loins, and also that which shall be written by the fruit of the loins of Judah, shall grow together into the confounding of false doctrines, and laying down the contentions, and establishing peace among the fruit of thy loins, and bringing them to a knowledge of their fathers in the latter days, and also to the knowledge of my covenant, saith the Lord. And out of weakness shall he be made strong, in that day when my work shall go forth, among all my people, which shall restore them, who are of the house of Israel in the last days. And that seer will I bless, and they that seek to destroy him shall be confounded. For this promise I give unto you, for I will remember you from generation to generation, and his name shall be called Joseph, and it shall be after the name of his father. And he shall be like unto you, for the thing which the Lord shall bring forth by his hand shall bring my people unto salvation. And the Lord swear unto Joseph that he would preserve his seed forever, saying, I will raise up Moses, and a rod shall be in his hand, and he shall gather together my people, and he shall lead them as a flock, and he shall smite the waters of the Red Sea with his rod. And he shall have judgment, and shall write the word of the Lord, and he shall not speak many words, for I will write unto him my law by the finger of mine own hand, and I will make a spokesman for him, and his name shall be called Aaron, and it shall be done unto thee in the last days also even as I have sworn. Therefore Joseph said unto his brethren, God will surely visit you, and bring you out of this land, unto the land which he sware unto Abraham, and unto Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph confirmed many other things unto his brethren, and took an oath of the children of Israel, saying unto them, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died when he was an hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and they put him in a coffin in Egypt, and he was kept from burial, by the children of Israel, that he might be carried up and laid in the sepulcher with his father. And thus they remembered the oath which they swore unto him. See also Gospel Topics, Joseph Smith. As a young boy in 1820, Joseph Smith wanted to know which church was true. As he searched the Bible for help, he read that he should ask of God. Acting on this counsel, Joseph went into the woods near his home and prayed. Suddenly a light shone above him, and Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ appeared unto him. When Joseph asked which church he should join, the Savior told him to join none of the churches then in existence, because they were teaching incorrect doctrines. Through this experience, and many others that followed, the Lord chose Joseph to be his prophet and to restore the gospel of Jesus Christ and his church to the earth. As Joseph Smith proved his worthiness, he was given a divine mission as a prophet of God. Through him, the Lord accomplished a great and marvelous work that included bringing forth the Book of Mormon, restoring the priesthood, revealing precious gospel truths, organizing the true church of Jesus Christ, and establishing temple work. On June 27, 1844, Joseph and his brother Hiram were killed in attack by an armed mob. They sealed their testimonies with their blood. For a testimony of the restored gospel to be complete, it must include a testimony of Joseph Smith's divine mission. The truthfulness of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints rests on the truthfulness of the first vision and the other revelations the Lord gave to the prophet Joseph. In the Doctrine and Covenants we learn that Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more 
save Jesus only for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that ever lived in it. Knowing the truth of Joseph Smith's testimony requires each earnest seeker of truth to study the Book of Mormon and then exercise sufficient faith in Christ to ask God in sincere, humble prayer whether the record is true. If the seeker asks with the real intent to act upon the answer revealed by the Holy Ghost, the truthfulness of Joseph Smith's vision will be manifest. In this way, every person can know that Joseph Smith spoke honestly when he declared, I had seen a vision, I knew it, and I knew that God knew it, and I could not deny it. Three twenty-five, And now, blessed art thou, Joseph, behold, thou art little. Wherefore, hearken unto the words of thy brother Nephi, and it shall be done unto thee, even according to the words which I have spoken. Remember the words of thy dying father. Amen. <laughs> 